Adams there, planning an afternoon nap. <laughs> Better do it now, because we have a nightmare coming your way. <laughs> Freddy's back. Freddy who? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> this is Freddy Krueger. Freddy is a dead child killer who never really died, and he lives on in two places, in the nightmares of the teenagers who live on Elm Street. And Freddy lives in the financial daydreams of people who make movies. It's low-budget schlock horror, and in spite of that, an enormous box office success. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 cost only four and a half million dollars. In the six weeks it's been in the theaters, it's grossed, and, and that may be the wrong term, it's taken in 36 million dollars. That, of course, has made Freddy very happy, and when you stop to think about it, that's just how we want Freddy to be. What's wrong, Joey? Feeling tongue-tied? <laughs> Robert England is the actor who plays Freddy Krueger. He looks a lot better in real life, and he's in a screening room at Astral Films in Toronto. Hello, Robert. Hello, Valerie. Hey, I'd love to shake your hand. Yes, but... I'd love to shake yours now. How can you live with yourself? <laughs> you know, it's a tough job, Val, but someone's got to do it. What can I say? You know, chasing these nubile teenage girls around, it's rough work. But, you know, it's for my art. But do you like your movies? Yeah, I do. I'm really proud of part three. I mean, I had some problems with the middle of part two. I thought it bogged down. I like the beginning and the end of part two a lot. I think part one is a minor classic already. And yeah, I, I, think, there's a, I think there's a need for these movies. There's sort you know, what? there's something that what the kids need? can... Yeah, there's something the kids can call their own. Don't you remember? Come on. Remember we, back to your old Reeboks, what you liked when you were 15? Yeah, Come but on. not scary stuff. I, I hate to say this, Freddie, but I can't go and see your movies. I am too afraid. I, that's all right. You know, there's movies, there's all sorts of movies we all don't see. I'm not a big fan of watching Joe Clayburgh take Valium, you know, but there's obviously an audience for that movie, too. This is a movie for someone else. Yo, I like the world of Henry Orient. I love the world of Henry Orient. I love that movie. Peter Sellers. Oh. How do you get ready to be Freddy? Ready to be Freddy. Ah, oh, boy, she can turn a phrase. Well, <laughs> I tell you, I sit in a chair, and Kevin Yeager, who is the handsomest makeup man in the world, uh, does my makeup for like four hours, and we drink a lot of coffee, and we talk, and I get more and more ornery as they put more and more glue on me, and in about four hours, there's nothing left of Robert England. It's just this cantankerous cuss named Fred Kroger! But how do you even look in the mirror? I mean, doesn't that frighten you? Because all I've seen of you is like a television promo for Nightmare on Elm Street. I've never forgotten it. I've seen that face once and it's burned in my memory. Burned. Good choice of words, Val, because that's what, just what happened to Fred. Uh, he's disfigured from the vigilante parents that burned him to death. Remember, two wrongs don't make a right. And, uh, yeah, it's ugly. I, I've told this story before, but for anyone that hasn't heard it, I fell asleep in my honey wagon, my dressing room, in the making of part one. And, you know, most movies are worried about losing the light. We were worried about getting the light because we shoot at night. And uh, the dawn was coming up, Hour of the Wolf, whatever that time is, just before, before sunrise. And the AD banged on the door of my honey wagon. I had the lights off, and I, I sat up and looked in the mirror, and I'd forgotten that I was in the makeup. And I had morning mouth, you know, <laughs> and everything else, and I was sort of like half asleep, and there was this bald little man looking back at me. It seared itself into my brain, that image. Yeah, I, I've scared myself. Ah, uh, but the passion you managed to instill in people, you know, you get people lining up to see you and meet you, wanting you to, to sign them, sign their cleavage even. Yeah, well, you know, there's, it started out as just one kind of fan, but now it's universal. Now yuppie parents are, are running the cassette and watching it with their kids, and the kids love to watch mom and dad go, ooh, gross, ooh, and, you know, and they have a lot of fun. And in a strange roundabout backdoor way, it's, it's, family, it's a family film now somehow. So, um, did, you, did you really get someone to come up to you and ask you to oh, sign their yeah, cleavage, that was actually, die now, love Freddy? That was at the Roosevelt Hotel in New York, and that was the very first time I knew there was a Freddy phenomenon. I was there for a, a series 
series I did where I played a benign, gentle character named Willie, the good alien on V, and I was there for that. Uh, and all of a sudden, the line mutated into Freddy fans. And there was a whole bunch of um, sort of heavy metal, punk rock, death rock, new romantics girls with a white base on their face and stuff. And this girl <coughs> had nothing on but a vest and uh, wanted me to sign her. Did you? What? I signed her arm in Mark a lot. One, two, I'm yes, coming three, for four. you. Shut your armpit, something like that. I can't remember. Oh, God. What do your friends and your family, like your brother in law, <laughs> Sam Shepard, make of your movies? I don't think so. Sam's too busy playing polo. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have any use for these movies. Or being with Jessica. Right. <laughs> well, does anyone you know ever go and see your movies? Do they comment on your acting? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, let, me tell you the, let me tell you how strange the whole thing is. Um, Roxanne, my girlfriend, has a friend who's a terrific playwright who lives up in San Francisco, John O'Keefe. He gets grants and endowments, and he's been produced here in Toronto, among other places. And I've been trying to get John's respect for years. He went and saw these movies, and he thinks they're like Dada surrealism art. He's blown away. It's, he's really impressed. This man's a certified genius. He just had a play produced and directed by Andre Gregory in New York. And now he, I'm cool because I'm Fred Krueger, which to him is some art icon thrashing middle-class monster, symbol of anti-capitalist America. So I'll be that. Hey, way to go. So are you going to be uh, Fred Krueger forever? No, no, no. I'm on this Monday night on uh, ABC Circle Films. I get to wear Armani clothes, and I hang out with Lee Horsley, and I'm a very sensitive Alan Alda, male-bonding kind of guy. On the on, on wife, show called yes, Infidelity. On Infidelity. Which is actually a real good, real good telefilm. But you are a classically trained actor. Yeah, I did a lot of Shakespeare in the 70s. And <laughs> a lot of razor blades uh, in the 80s. In the, a lot of razor blades in the 80s. A lot of razor blades in the mid-80s, yes. Well, it, they're kind of alike, you know. <laughs> alas, alas, poor Yorick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like a film critic sitting there. You look terrific. I know, this is the film critic set, I think. I want to spear those two guys who don't like the nightmare films. Hey, I those, won't those say a word. Those pizza heads from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say a word. I just okay. love your movies. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you, Fred. Bye-bye, Valerie. You're fun.